Welcome back to the EFI Hardware Podcast. We're your AI guides to all things EFI. That's right. This is episode two. Episode two. And uh, this yeah. time we're zeroing in on RAM tubes. Yeah, RAM tubes, velocity stacks, yeah. intake trumpets. Those are critical the same. to get the most out of your engine. Absolutely. So no matter what you call them, right. we're going to break it all down for you today. Mm -hmm. How those dimensions impact your power and torque. That's right. And you know, we're on episode two now, mm -hmm. so we know that you guys have a pretty good grasp right. of engine tuning already. Yeah, we can skip the basics. So we're gonna assume that you know what a ram tube does. Yeah. Smoothing that airflow, increasing air volume. Right. All that good stuff. All that good stuff. Let's jump right into the exciting part. Okay, let's get to it. How to get the most out of your engine. So one of the most common questions we get is, Yeah. How do we choose the right diameter? Right, diameter's huge yeah. when it comes to performance. It's all about finding that balance yeah. between air velocity and volume. Okay. A smaller diameter is gonna create higher air velocity. Okay. Which is fantastic for yeah. low end torque. You get that kick right yeah. when you hit the gas. Think of it like squeezing a garden hose. Ah, uh, yes. The water shoots out with more force. The garden hose analogy. Exactly. Love it. But there's a limit. Yeah, you don't want to. You can't just keep going smaller and smaller. No, you don't want to choke off the airflow right. completely. That's where understanding diameter and horsepower yeah. per cylinder, that relationship comes in. Okay. There is a minimum diameter required okay. to achieve a specific horsepower. All right. For example, a 50 millimeter diameter ram tube can deliver around 72 horsepower or 54 kilowatts. Okay, so we've got a good benchmark. Yeah. 50 millimeter for 72 horsepower. Yeah. So let's apply that to a real world build. Okay, yeah. If I've got a four cylinder engine, mm -hmm. does that mean I could get like 288 horsepower? Well, in theory, yes. Okay. But it's not quite that simple. Okay. You know, we're talking about a theoretical maximum here. Factors like displacement, cam profile, intake manifold design, those all play a role as well. Okay, so it's more like a rule of thumb yeah. to get us in the ballpark. Exactly. But then we got to look at the specifics of the engine itself. Exactly. That's where the art of engine tuning comes in. The art. Yeah, understanding how all those variables interact and fine tuning that setup. Now on the flip side, yeah. we've got larger diameter RAM tubes. Right. So I imagine those were all about maximizing that high RPM power. You got it. Larger diameters yeah. equal less restriction. Okay. So you get more air flowing into the engine. Makes sense. This is what you want when you're chasing high RPM horsepower figures. Okay. But, you know, gotta remember, there's always a trade-off. Right. There's always a trade-off. You increase that airflow volume at high RPMs. Mm -hmm. It can come at the cost of some of that low-end torque. So once again, we're balancing Right. what's the priority. Yeah, what's the application? Yeah, street car, you want that quick off the line response. Exactly. Race car built for high RPM, Yeah. go with those larger diameters. Exactly. And this is where things get really interesting because then you start talking about length. Oh, okay. So let's talk about length. Half How does that play into all of this? So RAM tube length is all about harnessing what's called the ram effect. The ram effect. Think about it like this. Okay. As the engine's running, yeah. it's creating these pressure waves mm -hmm. in the intake. Okay. And a properly tuned ram tube right. can actually capture and amplify those waves. So we're actually using the engine's energy. Kind of like a mini supercharger. Wow. Yeah, it is pretty cool. That's awesome. But here's the catch. Okay. The length of the ram tube mm -hmm. determines the frequency at which it resonates. Okay. So longer tubes, they create a lower resonant frequency, which is ideal for boosting low RPM torque. Shorter tubes, higher resonant frequency, good for high RPM power. So we've got this interplay between diameter and length. Exactly. And each of those influences the power and yeah. the torque yep. across the RPM range. Sure, across the whole range. Oh. Understanding this is key to selecting the right RAM tubes. Key. Yeah. For your specific application. For your build. For your build. Exactly. Okay, so we've covered how diameter and length affect performance. Right. What else should our listeners consider when they're choosing RAM tubes? Well, you know, every engine's a little bit different, right? You got to think about displacement, yeah. cam profile, okay. intake manifold design. So many factors. It all comes into play. Right. For example, okay. a high revving engine with aggressive cam timing, that's probably going to benefit from those shorter, larger diameter ram tubes to really maximize that airflow at those high RPMs. Uh, so you can't just pick a diameter and a length. Right. 
based on like a rule of thumb. It's not one size fits all. Yeah, you really gotta look at the whole picture. You gotta consider the engine's personality. I like that. Practical stuff too. Right. Correct. Space constraints. Oh yeah. In the engine bay. You can't just jam in the biggest ones you can find. Exactly. They gotta fit. Right. So let's say you've done your research. Okay. You've thought about your engine. Mm -hmm. You've measured. You've picked your ram tubes. Okay, what's next? What's testing and tuning. Okay. You can do all the simulations in the world. Right. But the proof is in the pudding. Gotta see how it works. Gotta see how it works in the real world. Get it on the dyno. Get it on the dyno. See what those numbers look like. Some dyno testing. Yep. What are we really looking for? Well. When we get those results back. You want to see how those power and torque curves change. Okay. With the different configurations. Okay. So you might start with a baseline right. using your existing setup. Okay. Then you swap in some different ram tubes. Okay. Whether it's a broad flat torque curve mm -hmm. for daily driving. Okay. Or maybe you want peak horsepower for track days. Yeah. The dyno will tell you what's up. Okay, so the dyno is important. It's crucial. Now what about materials? Ah, materials. Well, the truth is, the material itself, yeah. it doesn't have that big of an impact Nothing compared right. to the dimensions and the design. Okay. So whether it's aluminum, carbon fiber, mm. even plastic, okay. focus on those dimensions, okay. getting that smooth internal airflow. So we don't need to get lost in the weeds. No, keep it simple. With all the different materials and the science. Focus on the fundamentals. Airflow. Airflow, that's what it's all about. Ram tubes are more than just a shiny add-on. They're finely tuned performance enhancers. They can really make a difference. When you understand them, yeah. and you use them correctly. So I think we've covered it all. I think so. From the basics of diameter and length. Right. Hopefully everyone listening has learned a little something. That's what we're here for. About these amazing components. It can really make a difference. So if you're feeling inspired, yeah. get out in the garage. We'll tinker around. See what you can do. Keep that passion alive. Couldn't have said it better myself. This has been your host. And this has been your expert. Sign off until next time.